Hi, my name is Margaret Garten, and this is my informative speech on alternative treatments for ADHD. I'm going to let you all in on a little secret. When children see themselves as successful, they set themselves up for success. Even if you're at your wit's end trying to manage raising a child with ADHD, fear not. There are some simple lifestyle changes that can greatly reduce your stress and most importantly, reduce the stress of your child. I wanna to talk to everyone about alternative treatments for ADHD. This is an extremely important thing to consider because many parents turn to medication out of desperation but fail to implement strategies that may replace the medications altogether. As the mother of a child with ADHD, I've personally implemented many of these techniques and have seen a wonderfully positive change in my daughter. This is Mackenzie and she is eight years old. We're getting through this together without the use of medications. One of the most important things to consider is that many children who suffer from ADHD have low self-esteem. Although it can be frustrating to constantly correct your child, your outward anger and harsh words can further lower their self-esteem. Providing positive attention, giving effective instructions, praising your child's efforts, establishing rewards, and using consistent consequences are all great parenting strategies for children with ADHD. You'll need to accept that your child will require multiple reminders to complete a task and willingly remind them in a pleasant way. Making sure that your tone is pleasant will help your child feel more inclined to do what they've been asked. When your child is successful at doing what they were asked to do with minimal conflict, it cannot go unnoticed. These children thrive off of positive reinforcement, encouragement, and being rewarded for good behaviors. However, the rewards that you give your child do not need to be in the form of toys or food. You can reward your child with quality time spent together, a family game night, um, or fun with a purpose. Having a purpose for fun is important for a child with ADHD because if you let them do whatever they want or leave them in a room full of toys, they will likely make poor decisions or make a huge mess and end up in trouble for their behaviors. Cheryl Carter wrote a great book called Organize Your ADHD Child, A Practical Guide for Parents. In the first chapter, she talks about structured fun with a purpose. Some of the points that she addressed are that fun needs to be somewhat structured and organized and specific activities and crafts one at a time will help a child stay on the right track. She mentions that it's up to you to put the structure and understanding in your child's life and that it will greatly improve their self-esteem. Probably one of the most important techniques that you should consider when raising a child with ADHD is that consistency is key. Children suffering from ADHD thrive in structured environments. It helps them feel more in control of their own life. As you can see, there are many things that you can do to increase the effectiveness of your child's environment. Creating charts or checklists, setting alarms, using timers, using planners, and establishing routines are all great strategies. It may take some extra effort to implement these things, but this could be the key to your child's success. The routine should be consistent with your child completing specific tasks at specific times every day. Have them wake up at the same time every day with clothing set out the night before so that they can immediately get dressed. Dinner and bath time should be set in place as well. If you're having trouble getting your child out of bed in the mornings, an alarm clock should be used in the child's bedroom and should be set for the same time every day.
An alarm clock or stopwatch can also be used throughout days, evenings, or weekends as a reminder to keep the routine going. You should also utilize posters, whiteboards, and other tools to serve as reminders for your child. Remember, the child's progress should be recognized and praised. You'll also need to make sure that rules are set in place alongside the routine. Rules should be clear and concise with no chance of being misunderstood. You need to make sure that your child completely understands what's expected of them by asking your child to say the rule out loud and explain what they think it means. Instead of always telling your child not to do something, it's important to try telling them what they should be doing. For example, do not yell at your sister can be expressed as be kind to your sister instead. This gives them something positive to focus on achieving. If you feel uh, that the efforts that you're making at home aren't enough to reduce the symptoms of your child's condition, individual therapy can make a huge difference in their lives. Therapy won't affect the core symptoms, but it will teach your child skills that they can use to control them. A therapist will help your child become aware of their symptoms and create a plan for how to handle them. Therapists will also help your child come up with goals to work towards. As your child begins achieving their goals and gaining more control, the low self-esteem that is associated with ADHD will begin to go away and your child will become more confident. Another important reason that a child with ADHD should be seen by a therapist is that the child could be suffering from a co-occurring disorder, such as anxiety disorder, depression, ODD, and many others. Dr. Margaret Austin says that co-occurring disorders exist in 60 to 80% of people who are diagnosed with ADD. She also said that the reason why identifying co-occurring disorders is so important is because it can greatly impact the way in which a child should be treated. When you're feeling overwhelmed by your child's condition, it's important to take a closer look at what you can be doing to help improve it. There are many things that can be done in the home and through therapy that will make life easier for the entire family. By using some of these methods, you will avoid making your child feel worthless or frustrated. If the symptoms are severe enough and a psychiatrist has determined that ADD medicine is necessary, you should not rely solely on the medication to fix your child. The more effort that you're willing to put in, the more successful you and your child with ADHD will be at managing their disorder. Thank you so much.